hello. And welcome. I don't believe that we've met before, have we? Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming. Today we're going to be looking at a game by Supermassive Games and Bandai Namco Entertainment, released in October of 2020, Little Hope. Little Hope marks the second release in the Dark Pictures Anthology, a series of intense, standalone, branching, cinematic horror games featuring single and multiplayer game modes as well as multiple endings. For more information about the Dark Pictures Anthology, check out our review of the first episode in the series, Man of Medan, which explores the topic in some detail. The game is rated Mature 17 Plus and uses the Unreal 4 engine, and as such, PC requirements are pretty mild. You only really need a quad-core CPU and a mid-range GPU made in the last 7 or 8 years to enjoy the game. You will, however, need about 80 gigs of storage space and 8 gigs of RAM. The game is also available for the PS4 and Xbox One. The game takes place in the aptly named town of Little Hope, where the experience will make you think it's named for describing your chances of survival. The second installment in the series showcases quite a bit of creepy, dark environments, horrific scenery filled with flashbacks, jump scares, and some outright evil-looking individuals. Little Hope is very much an interactive movie, and much of the game features a passive, cinema-like experience full of fantastically detailed and sculpted environments. Making a return from the first game is the curator, your host, who in between chapters provides feedback, guidance, and the occasional hint. Also making a return are quick time events where you need to react in time to actions in the game by clicking boxes, pressing specific keys, or good old button mashing. Identically to the first game, you'll also be choosing your path where you'll build or break relationships between characters through dialogue choices while also forging character traits. Remember, choices have consequences. In between cutscenes, you'll be given the ability to move and explore the environment using your flashlight or cell phone flash to light the way. You'll pick up items, look at photos, and otherwise interact with a limited number of items. You'll find secrets, experience premonitions, and even unlock bonus content upon completion. The characters in their environments are highly detailed and look quite realistic, but not quite lifelike, and while there are a few kinks here and there, the game is still quite pretty. Animations are improved upon from the first game and are quite good as well, barring a few unnatural looking movements. The game's many cinematic sequences are all extremely well done and the overall presentation here is quite good. Sound effects and music, as in the first game, are superbly orchestrated. The much improved voice acting is very good and feels like a huge step in the right direction. Very well done. Looks like we really are trapped here. The story is a tough one to tackle as I don't want to spoil it for you, but I'm going to say that it's much like an onion. What you see on the surface is far from the only thing going on, and as you peel away the layers as you progress through the game, you'll uncover far more than expected. I was pleasantly surprised with Little Hope's story and how it all unfolded. I think it really fits the short horror genre quite nicely. Don't move. I'll start by saying the game and its interactivity are quite fun, but I don't like this default point and click method of navigating and exploring, as it felt odd. Changing over to the WSAD method made things feel a lot more natural. You can still use a gamepad in any case, and that would be my suggestion if you have one handy. One noticeable improvement here is that quick time events are now announced shortly before they happen, allowing you time to get your hands back onto the controls. I found myself often relaxing while watching the cinematics roll by and getting caught with my hands off the keyboard and mouse in the first game. It was quite frustrating, so it's nice to see this resolved. The game's six chapters should take you roughly five to six hours on a typical run-through. There are multiple endings and plenty of choices to be made throughout the game to help you come to different outcomes, so there is some limited replayability here. Play this one with friends to truly get the most from the game, as it really does bring a whole new element to the experience. As in the first game in the series, this is more of an interactive cinema, a choose-your-own-adventure, than a straight-up game. And while this may disappoint some, it really does make for an interesting and enjoyable time for many others. It'll make you jump, ask questions, and scratch your head. If you love the first game and are looking for more, enjoy horror movies, great stories, or just want to try something different, then you should give this one a try. I'm glad I did. As always, thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and consider our free lifetime subscription offer. This is Chris from Talent Gaming, signing out.